offensive rebound and put back. Taj underneath with the left hand. McWilliams Franklin. Taj, it is so wonderful to see you. Welcome back. How exciting is it for you to be back? What are you expecting this is going to be like? Like old times. You know, you kind of, this is the part you miss when you're done playing. It's not really the on court, it's the competition, but more than that, it's the sisterhood and just, wow, it takes me back. It makes me feel young again, like when I came and we were all together fighting for our cause. You were always known for your, your work ethic and your ability to kind of pull a team together. And I know that everyone always used to call you, you know, Mama Taj, and like people always look to you. Talk about that role with that team, and it was just so critical. You've just played such a huge part with that team. Yeah, I, can't, I think Candace Wiggins started the Mama Taj thing. I never had a nickname before, it was just always Taj. And I think for this team, that was one of the things when Cheryl Reeve called me, she really had a vision. Mm -hmm and her persistence paid off. She had Lindsay call me, Way called me. I talked to Rebecca <laughs> Brunson. She like put on the press. So um, once I really heard from them, how they felt the truth about the city, the truth about playing, Cheryl Reed was just like, I need some stability in the locker room. I need a voice in the locker room and I need some stability on the defensive end. And you know, those are the things I do naturally. And it really fed into the wheelhouse of what I do really well. What was the personality? of that team because it seemed like it was just such a great chemistry. Yeah, it was actually and I think it blended because we had we didn't have people that were the same. So when you have too many chiefs, then there's an issue. When you have too many other folks that don't want to lead, there's also an issue. And I think we blended it all seamlessly and Cheryl Reeve helped with that because she gave people space to be who they were. And instead of trying to fit everyone into a box of what she thought they should be, she let them be them on the court. So take us after you went overseas to play and then kind of take us through what, were you, what did you do after? And did you struggle at all when you did finally walk away from the game? It took a while to get through that. No, I didn't want to be on the court. I didn't want to be waking up at 8 a.m. going to therapy with my knees iced and all of that. But I did miss the part about us fighting for a cause and all being together in that rush. But at the end of the day, when people talk about me, what I kind of started thinking about legacy, what do I want people to say? Oh, she's a great player, that's awesome, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't want that. I never wanted the accolades and stuff. I wanted them to say, I left the game better than I found it. I helped the next generation move on and understand the nuances of the game, but also the life lessons you learn from any sport. And so that has been my now overriding goal. Years later, I mean, Coach Reed would still talk about, like, we need that type of player, like a Taj. We don't have that type of player, like, a, you know, and so that impact just kept going on and on. So how has it been for you then working in the offices, kind of give us that next step of your career and, and how you learn that next role? I remember when it was time for me to retire, Played 14 years, never once had a conversation with anyone about what are you gonna do when you're done with this? It's kind of like left out. And so they made up this position to help me because I can build bridges. I'm really great with relationships. I build bridges, but also the player development part is to help these players. Young guns, great, they got all these deals. Figure out what they want to do when the ball stops bouncing. That was important for me. That's part of the legacy. 98% of us are gonna have to do something after. It doesn't matter if it's commentating, color commentating, <laughs> entrepreneurship, they want to own businesses, venture capitalists, whatever it is, at some point they're going to have to do that. And I'm the connector. That's amazing. So your career was just a huge impact on everyone and the league and women's basketball. And now your career in the WNBA, you're impacting the next generation to come through. It's a perfect fit. Taj, thank you so much for spending time thank with you. us and thank you for everything that you have done to make this league great. Thank you so much, Leah. I appreciate you always.